This project, like all my others, started from a need that I had. When I perform acoustically, I wanted that stomp box or foot drum effect. So I went on YouTube and I looked, and there's a ton of projects. They all work based on a piezo element or a microphone or something to that effect. When I tried them out, they sounded differently on the different amps that I use. But I wanted something that I could control regardless of which amp or what venue I was in. So I came up with a different approach, and I call that approach Electric Stomp. It's actually a drum synthesizer, a very simple one, but a drum synthesizer nonetheless. It allows me to control the pitch and decay of the signal, the volume, and it also allows me to plug in my acoustic guitar through the system so that I only need one input into an amp. Of course, a lot of the amps only have one input. So let's listen and see what it sounds like. Electric storm. I'm playing with electric storm. Beat that beat. Electric storm. Now that's the sound that I want. Let's take a little closer look as I trigger the electric stomp manually. As I change the pitch, the frequency or the pitch of the drum sound goes up or down. When I increase the decay, it, the sound lasts longer. So I can adjust that to any sound that I really want. And then I have a volume control which allows me to, to increase or decrease the volume of the drum so it can match it with the acoustic input from my guitar. And it all comes out through a single plug. Of course I have power, which are two 9 volt batteries, but they tend to last forever because of the way the circuit is made. And the triggering mechanism is really effective. It's called a micro switch and it's used a lot in industry because it's like super reliable and it's really inexpensive. It only costs like a buck or so. so let's take a little closer look at electric stomp. Let's take the top off. You notice I have a little foot stop here, so when I put my foot on, it doesn't slide backwards. And there's a hole in the top that allows the micro switch to peek through. And there's the micro switch, and it's attached to this block here with two small screws, and that can be removed or taken apart. And inside here are the components. Now let's take a look. First we have the two 9 volt batteries here, held steady by this screw coming up from the bottom and this piece of aluminum with a wing nut. Then we have the potentiometers for the pitch and the volume. We have the input jack for the acoustic guitar, or regular guitar in fact may be. We have the output jack, we have the power switch, and we have the decay potentiometer. Now these are all connected to a, an experimenter's board here. This is a, a board where you don't have to solder. You just plug in the individual pieces into these little holes here. And inside them they have contacts. So you just push them in and they're connected. There's the integrated circuit right in the middle. And there's those orange things, the capacitors. The other things are resistors. There's these two guys over here that are the two diodes. There are some jumpers. The wires coming from the potentiometers and the like. And that's about it. There are not too many components. It's not too expensive to build. The only soldering you have to do is to connect the external components like the switch, the potentiometers, and the jacks. On the top, I have this black surface here, which is actually shelf lining. It's nice and uh, sticky, so it doesn't uh, let your foot slide. And on the bottom, I have that one screw going through that keeps the batteries in place, and then I just put two more pieces 
of that shelf liner to prevent this from sliding. For those hardcore electronic do-it-yourselfers, here's the schematic that will allow you to determine the components, where to place them, and how to interconnect them. For everybody else who's interested, please drop me a line at the email address shown on the screen and I'll be happy to send you more information.